<laughs> Skipping ropes with red wine, that's fun. Yeah, that's and that's perfect. what it makes you want to do. Oh, Nothing makes me want to do cardio, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People. By now, you probably already know the drill. We've got six wines, blind tasted. We don't know what they are. Lockie has organized them in randomized fashion. Of course, a massive thanks to Sometimes Always for putting the selection together. We don't know what's been put in the selection. We just kind of like give them the credit card and kind of go nuts in the hope that we will find delicious drops for you guys this summer. If you want to duke it out and actually discuss them with us, jump into the Discord link below. We're there, we're active, and you can talk to us directly about the wines that you're drinking on a daily basis and maybe some of the wines that we've reviewed on the show that you like or dislike or whatever. Anyway, let's get into it. Back for my least favorite activity on Mondays, drinking wine. Who am I kidding? It's the best way to start your week. Um, looks like we've got six reds this week, so here we go. Reservoir water. Very um, septic tank. Ooh, that's cool. That's fun. I'm going to say this is orange wine. I'm going to say this is actually a composition of uh, probably predominantly white varieties that have been left on the skins. And the thing that tells me that is, is this lanolin uh, aroma that um, that's just really, really common across it. Sort of, it's like a lanolin black tea um, a bergamot uh, type aroma that's really common with white skin contact wines. No, not mousy. Yes. Yeah, super like nice ripe peach, great little furry structure. Mmm, that's a really lovely nose. Uh, what are we dealing with? Almost like honeyed, like stewed fruit, like like a stewed pear or something like that that you might have for dessert. Really sickly sweet little thing. This is definitely not a um, entry level orange wine. This is for like you've had a few and you're ready to actually dive in and get kind of weird. This is definitely on the weird end of the spectrum. But it's on, but it's the pitch perfect weird. It's like Radiohead's Kid A. It's weird, but it's still fucking amazing. Uh, so that's kind of what they are dealing with here, and a absolute ripper to get us started. Scrumptious. One number two. We're going red. We're going dark. We're going heavy. We're going metal. Soft and soft and rich is how I'll describe the smell of that. Yeah, like a slight hint of wet cardboard, but not too much at all. It's mainly just this like really robust sort of fruit characteristic that's going on in there. Yeah, big like plums and blueberries and blackberries and foraging through shrubs, eating the things that aren't poisonous. That's what this smells like. Definitely got some Grenache vibes. Acidity is like really not peaky, um, but it's definitely sort of medium plus. I'd be expecting to spend around about 35 bucks a bottle for this and I'd probably want six. Oh yeah, yum, yum, yum. Oh, ooh. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of heat and a little bit of the a uh, little bit of the dryness that red wine occasionally has, but that's also just folded in with this really nice big deep red. I still would only take six bottles because there's nothing that's going holy shit at me, but it's just like, oh, this is very nice. Thank you very much. I'd like another few bottles of that. Wine number three. Let's go. It's red. What else do you want me to say about it? So we're going a little bit clearer, you know, a little bit lighter in color, not as dense as wine number two. Oh, gorgeous, that's pretty. Yeah, what a complete wine. Uh, Pinot-esque in its style, maybe even Grenache. Um, maybe a bit of whole bunch work. A savory kind of like wallop of flavor that comes along with the, what you're smelling is really quite exciting. Like you're smelling this really awesome, just like fresh fruity little thing, but then there's this like awesome, like smoky, almost nutty dried herb it's like uh, Asian spice kind of character that kind of ro rolls along the line that you don't smell on the nose but you pick it up all on the palate that's really quite thrilling I only need three bottles of this one not something that I'd be drinking on the daily I think it might be a little bit cheaper potentially maybe down in the $30 range uh, and varietally uh I think it's a, it's a Syrah or a Shiraz that was picked in a hot vintage, so I'm thinking maybe 2019, and I reckon it's pretty young. Um, like I said, I would happily drop 60 bucks. If it's less than that, what a bargain. All right, got another red wine. Kind of looks like the other one. Let's see what it smells like. Like anchovy, sort of like seafood, but not like fresh seafood, not off seafood, but that really sort of like cured, salty, briny sort of um, thing going to it. There's a, there is a, a really funky sort of green aspect to this, 
which I think is really quite fascinating. Um, that it's not all sort of overt primary fruit. There's some sort of secondary and tertiary characters here. I love that tannin structure. Acids there as well. A lot more savory, just chewy and interesting little flavors there. But then, yeah, there's that great core of like red and purple fruits that everyone's kind of suck it into but then it slaps you in the back of the head with something completely unexpected that is a really really fun wine this is awesome feels like a big time summer red like um again i say this almost too often but throwing it in the fridge for a little while just chilling it out it's definitely a six bottler for me definitely a six yeah there's not there's nothing much more to say about this and it's a really really thrilling red wine to drink it's juicy it's structured it's Fantastically poised and yeah, just that intrigue that you get on the palate is absolutely fascinating. Um, some kind of like Italian at number, don't care, um, but bloody delicious. Fifth wine in and I'm feeling, I'm feeling like these are, are more Pinot. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Pinot day. Whole bunches. You can smell the stems from a while away. Beautifully stemmy and just like a great juicy, interesting structure with then that kind of awesome little olive tapenade thing um, that just gets me absolutely going. Yeah, like sour cherry, sour grape, that sort of like, yeah, like confectionery sort of sour though, not sour as in like fruit that's underripe, like a purposeful sour. That's really cool. Um, I'd hope that this comes in at around about 45 bucks and I'd grab six bottles. Because I think chilled down, just to chill down in the fridge a little bit. We're not talking like white wine cold here. We're talking just bring about 10 degrees off ambient uh, and you're going to be in flavor town. It's going to be a very, very enjoyable beverage. Last wine of the week and we're back to the big, bad red wines. <laughs> oh, black as night. Black as Batman's cape. Whoa, that is soupy. That is very soupy. All of that feels heavier, just like in your mouth, especially when you can, like, if you go into Harvey Norman and you're looking at two TVs next to each other, you'll think, wow, that 4K TV looks like dog shit compared to this 4K TV. But if you took that 4K TV home, it would still look incredible. It's just because you've got the direct comparison. So I don't know if this tastes thick because it tastes thick or just because it's being directly compared to these wines here. But honestly, it's got the mouthfeel of like milk comparatively. Old school. <laughs> this is fucking old school. This is a, this is your dad's wine. Oh, it's like, it's like you've grabbed a whole bunch of fresh violets and just, yes. Green, peppery, great tannins, but yeah, that core of like really overripe prunes and figs and all that kind of stuff is, is there in spades, but there's enough energy and lightness to keep it really well balanced. I am very much about this wine. Cool tasting, a lot of variety in the reds. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, if this was the start of the show, I wouldn't be able to pick the difference between any of them, but you know, I've got a very developed palate now. But let's see what the boys think. Welcome back. Guys, we've got six wines. Fun lineup, huh? I was into it. I was really into it. I went, I was bought, bought some wine. I bought some wine, I spent some money. I think I think a lot of these, I think traditionally we've seen sort of around that 20, 30 dollar mark tends to be that sweet spot. I reckon somehow, I just get the feeling that in this lineup, the average price is just a little bit higher. Yeah. Right. First wine. Yeah, great, loved it. 12 nah. bottles. 12 bottles, I was 12 bottles. You were not about it? It was one glass. Oh, uh, I was 12 bottles and I thought uh, around about 40 bucks. I went 12 bottles and 60, I reckon this might be some good gear. Yeah, I thought it was 38 bucks and I just needed a glass of it. Where are we at? We're all over the shop, Lockie. Oh, 29 bucks. That's $29. cheap. 29 bucks. Jürgen, Jürgen. I've never had any of these wines. I've seen them around, but yeah, I can understand the, uh, cool. the popularity oh, of them. Oh, yeah, I've seen, I've, I've, I saw these about a year ago, but I never really got a chance to try them. This is classic, man. This is really, really classy. Uh, drink. So I'm assuming just a blend of a bunch of different skins and varieties. Um, I don't, yeah, I yeah, uh, loved it. Big into it. For $30, that's awesome. Yeah, real wine nerds um, are drinking orange wine. Yeah, and then Definitely. we're drinking Pinot Noir. All right, moving on to wine number two. I reckon we've got a few Pinots in this lineup. Really? Like, yeah, I was I was in Pinot Zone for a lot of these. I did not get into the Pinot Zone at all. What do we got, the Lachlan? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, is it Grenache or Pinot? Is it Grenache or Pinot? It's gotta be one know. of them. Oh, Shobby. Shobby's. Oh, Rosso, Rosso number. So, wow. Poco Rosso uh, by Tom Shobrook, one of the OGs of uh, the, the Natty Wine game. And one of the most Dang. awesome human beings of all time. Yeah, genuine dude, genuine dude. Um, that's, 
You know what's really interesting? Because we saw last week yeah. uh, James Erskine, one of the other OGs, produce one not dissimilar to this. Yeah. In that sort of style, like really well tailored, really well maintained, but yeah. great sort of um, uh, broad tenon profile. So, um, yeah, really incredible. No idea what's in it. I'm guessing it'll be Grenache Syrah. Yeah, in that kind of ballpark. Yeah, and also no, no sulfur again. No SO2 on that. That's uh, that is a squeaky wine. These yeah. are really high quality wines. Yeah, I was about that. No, no SO2, yeah, that's, uh, you'd never that's, distinguish it. That's so cool. Yeah, let's chuck that in the fridge and drink it later. Moving on to number three, potentially Pinot. <laughs> Potent <laughs> it's, it's, that's what yeah. the episode's going to be called. Potentially Pinot. Yeah. Uh, oh no, I reckon this one was Nero. Yeah, it had, it had some like uh, Italian vibes. For some reason, I thought this was like high-end Pinot. And I think I'm really wrong. I think it's a little bit too chalky for that. Like yeah, it's not too juicy chalky. enough. Yeah. Way too chalky. What have we got? Like 38. Ooh, great value. Yeah. We'll Into it. Into it. Oh, it's Pinot. It's Pinot. It's um Loire Valley Pinot. That's cool. Wow. So okay. this, is, this is some uh, really cool uh, kind of hands-off gear from um, Mosaic. Loire Valley. No Mosaic. Uh, Athletes du Vin. All their wines are great and really, really good value. Like good Chenin, good Cap Franc, good Grolo. Like stuff like that. These guys make some really, really good, fun uh, import wines that are actually not too far out of the. Like they won't break the bank. No, not at all. I feel vindicated. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you fucking should. Call the label too. All right, wine number four. Wine of the lineup. Okay, uh, wine of the lineup. Oh, dude, I was like three thirty bucks in one bottle. What? I was. I stung this. Where are we at? We're all over the shop on this one, Lockie. 69. Nice. No, 69 bucks. Yeah, okay, mine I'll be buying a dozen, but I'll definitely buy a few bottles. It's awesome. Are they Syrah? Yes! Nailed it. Yes! Nailed it. Definitely a whole bunch of Syrah. There is absolutely no doubt about it. You know that's coming that down is, with me. Yeah. Uh, I think this might be his Gamay, actually. Really? Yeah. So he makes some awesome Gamay. Fuck yeah. Told you, dude. Oh, so sick. He Again. Gets, he gets the good one. No Always sulfur. Oh, God. Yes! One of five! This is the hot little number. It was kind of like a bit of VA going on. Thought maybe like New new World. Six bottles for 45. Six for 55. Pretty middle of the road. Where are we at, Lockie? Oh, okay. Let's go. I like it more now than I did when I first tasted it, actually. Oh, no, like this is like next level Grenache. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we've got Vanguardist, um, McLaren Bell, Grenache, Blewett Springs. Um, and that explains a lot about the wine, the lower acidity, yeah. the higher um, alcohol content, yeah. the sort of luscious, and definitely that sort of Christmas cakey mm. sort of vibe there as well. Incredible winemaker, again, another genuine bloke, absolutely yeah. uh, brilliant human Legend. being. And yeah, this is this is arguably the one of the best Grenaches in McLaren Vale. I think we're drinking this a little bit too early. Man, I'm just gonna say so far through, it's got one wine left and we've got a stunning lineup. Yeah. Like, this is a stunning lineup of reds. Yeah. Probably one of the most stunning we've had so far, but I reckon the most stunning is about to happen because I really? was I was all about this. Yeah, Cabernet, twelve bottles, eighty bucks, and my only note was fuck. <laughs> yes, yeah, fair chat. Yeah, no, nah, into I, it. Really good. What is it? I told you, oh. idiot. <laughs> we ever listen to me? So I, you I, haven't I, spent enough time with my dad. I know. I'm gonna, <laughs> buy, I'm gonna buy two of these things. What is this? Montepulciano. Monte. There you go. One of the best value reds. Montepulciano, one of the best value reds. I, That's really, really, really good. That's uh, utterly incredible. Um, not uh, not Tuscany as I thought it was. Um, you know, we're literally just across the other side of the country. Um, but wow, like I've been really impressed with a lot of the imports that are coming in uh, mm. at Italy, especially from um, uh, like Abruzzo in particular, because they tend not to command the really, really super high prices. Um, obviously, super impressed with that. Yes, let's do it. Drop eighty bucks on it. Um, but yeah, I'm stoked. I am yeah. stoked. Sick. That's gonna be on my Christmas line playlist. Up. Yeah, Man, we, line up. we hit some cult classics there. Some like new cult classics and some some important legends and all that kind of sick. That was dope. This is probably one of the most amazing spectrums of red wine we've seen on the show. Yeah, two, of, yeah, two, of, two of those wines in that list are some of my favorite wines. Uh, I would so actually sick. recommend people buy this as a six pack. Yeah, it's oh, sometimes always. True, like, literally, actually. if you could do what we've just done with this six six right here, I reckon that would be one of the most enthralling tastings for the folks at home. Absolutely. Good luck trying to get that over so away because I'm going to cop that. And <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> guys, till next week, we'll be here. See ya. <laughs>